Thank you very much for having me. I think there we saw that a number of different young people that have been impacted by Dream Flight, but I think the biggest testimony to it is the fact that it doesn't get public funding and people come back and they want to raise money, whether it be climb Snowden, do a bake sale, have a non-school uniform day, whatever it is, there's, there's wild, crazy things that you can do or there's something small. But it's a huge operation where on any one day there's 400 people moving around a park or an attraction in Florida. It's been going a very long time, which means that over six and a half thousand young people have had the opportunity to experience the trip. And as a patron, I'm really fortunate now to go back as an adult and get to meet 192 of them every year. But and what I realise is that every single one of them has a different story. When my mum told me that I'd been selected to go on the trip, my instinctive reaction was, well, I think they've sent the letter to the wrong house because I'm not ill and I'm not dying. So why would I need to go? Because I was born with a disability called cerebral palsy, which is very common. One in 800 babies are born with the disability, but it can impact you in a number of different ways because essentially it's brain damage. But I was born with it, so I don't know any different. I don't know what I'm missing, it's all good. And what I've learned as I've got older is actually I'm not disabled. I have a disability and I have an impairment, but I'm not disabled. I'm disabled by the barriers that society places on me, which is exactly the same as any of you in this room. So by going on the trip, what I got out of it was the realisation that it's, it's normal to be different and it's okay to be different and it's not a weakness if you have to have a different piece of equipment to get a job done or you have to ask someone else for help. So we take them age eight, between 8 and 14 and that is really crunch time when you are developing yourself and figuring out where you fit in this world. So for me it opened up this whole world that made me think of the Paralympics because I loved sport but I was like, well, I can go to the Olympics with everybody else. Obviously, I couldn't. But this whole world of the Paralympic Games opened up. I was like, okay, it's not, it's not taking an easy route. It's not being soft. Because as we know now, in 2019, the Paralympics is a place where elite athletes compete. They just happen to have an impairment. So it opened up this world. I began swimming. And swimming became my motivation because I wanted to win a gold medal when I was 22. And there was a lot of ups and downs along the way. There was a silver medal in Athens to kick off the campaign. And then I had four years to go to Beijing and it was all going very well. I could really badly use the swimmingly pun, but I won't because it's horrible. But it was going very well, I graduated and I had one year to Beijing. And then my mum got sick and it turned out that she had terminal cancer. And I had a whole new appreciation for difference and the way I viewed everything but the Paralympics wasn't waiting and so I had to I kept training and I was really grateful for it but I had a reason to get up in the morning I had a reason to keep moving forward and I could be as angry as I wanted in that pool or in the gym and ultimately spoiler alert but there we go the picture I ended up with this shiny gold medal on the 12th of September 2008 I think the significance of that whole story is that actually on the 1st of September, 2nd of September in China, but 1st of September in Britain, my mum actually passed away. So she didn't get to see me win my gold medal, but I wouldn't have got it if it wasn't for her. And actually, if I hadn't have had swimming to keep me going, and I hadn't have had the platform of swimming in Beijing and everything to keep me moving forward now and have the life that I've got now, then I don't know how I would have coped with that situation. I will always be blessed that I had swimming and it's been such a big part of my life for so long but it would never have happened if I hadn't have gone on dream flight and had this whole new appreciation for difference and the fact that it was okay and I could be me and it didn't matter if people judged me because there was there's something that everybody needs help with whereas some of these young people aren't so lucky and that's why dream flight is so amazing because you meet people all the time who are different to you but going through a similar thing and you're not you're not the only kid in your class with cancer anymore or you're not the only kid that uses a wheelchair or has to or doesn't get to eat school dinner because they get fed through a tube all these different things and so there's a, a huge diverse community of dream flatters and then just finally because i said there's like so many stories you could tell 
but just this year, one of the young people was 10, and he had a life, he's got a life limiting condition. And um, we walked into Magic Kingdom, which is that picture there, and he said, Oh my gosh, wow, this is amazing. All my dreams have come true. And this is what heaven's going to look like. And so when we say dream flight changes lives, it does. And that's not that. And sometimes people are like, what, changes them from bad to good? No, it just enhances them and makes them what you need to be for as long as you're on this planet. <coughs> because it gives you that interaction, it gives you that experience, and it gives you that safe environment to be independent and to explore the possibilities of you as a human being. So thank you very, very much for supporting the Snowden Climb and ultimately Dream Flight.